Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Dr. Leisha the Preacher. And um, I decided to go ahead and continue on with my um, whores have godly purposes too. Whores. And nowadays they're called hoes. Hoes have godly purposes too. We all have use in the kingdom. We all have use in the kingdom. No matter what title we hold. We have use in the kingdom. No matter what kind of woman you are. You can be an adulterous woman. You can be an adulterous woman and be used by God. For an example, uh, this woman here, I don't believe she even has a name. So we're going to call her the adultery woman. In my first video, we talked about the Samaritan woman. I love her. <laughs> I love all the women. <laughs> I love my girls. All my girls. <laughs> but the adultery woman, um, she comes out of John chapter 8. And she may be in other books, possibly. I don't know. I got to look into that. But do your homework and find out too. We all will, you know, do more research after this video. Please do more research. So, but anyway, um, John chapter 8. I'll just read a little bit. It's a very short story, so there's not a lot here. But um, it says, um, verse 1, John chapter 8, verse 1. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. Kind of like what we're doing. I'm sitting down, and I'm teaching. You know? I think that's why it's so important to attend Bible study. This is a time like no other to join a church of some type. Physically leave your house and go or stream a church on TV. You know, become a online member. Do what you need to do to save yourself from these times, these ending times. We're in the end times. So that means it's winding down. You know, it's getting down to the nitty gritty. And you may say, well, people have been saying that for years and for generations. Well, okay. <laughs> so each generation that comes, we're getting tighter and tighter. So again, let me go back to this because I get distracted like that. <laughs> okay, so um, verse 3. And the scribes and the Pharisees, you know, the bigwigs, you know, brought unto him. They brought to Jesus. We're talking Jesus here. This is when he was alive and walking and ministering, healing and on earth. So the big wigs brought to him a woman taken in adultery. So she was caught messing around on her husband. She was caught messing around. So we're going to call her the adultery woman, the adultery woman, because that's how she's identified. 
woman taken in adultery. So we'll call her the adultery woman. And when they had set her in the midst, so they brought this woman like, like, like maybe she was like, you know, chained up or something or, you know, had chains on her wrist and like a prisoner was presented to them like this evil adultery woman, you know, here. They, verse 4, they said unto him, Master. So, they're the scribes and Pharisees. They're the uh, the higher ranking in, uh, in the society, in their um, religion, the religious beliefs. Yeah. But they called Jesus Master. But I'm not trying to get caught up in, I'm not trying to preach, preach, so... This is a video. This woman was taken in adultery in the very act. So did they walk in on her doing something? What? They caught her in the very act. Verse 5. Now Moses... And the law commanded us that such should be stoned. Adulterous women should be stoned. But what sayest thou? Ooh. They're questioning Jesus. They're trying to trip him up. Okay, I won't get into that either. <laughs> Verse 6. This they said, tempting him. Okay, tempting him, trip him up, you know. That they might have to accuse him. They tried to set him up. They wanted to harm Jesus. And they needed a reason. And they were trying to use this woman. This adulterous woman. They try to use her. The big wigs. Mm. Wow. So they used. The woman. That's deep. That's deep. But Jesus stooped down. He's always down, Jesus. He comes down <laughs> to where we are. <laughs> With the Samaritan woman, he came to where she was at, right where she was at. In this situation with the adultery woman, Jesus stooped down to her oppressor. He stooped down. With his finger, wrote on the ground. I'm not, I get so caught up, but the ground, it's like he was just pointing, letting them know. Don't forget where you came from. No matter how big you are, how famous, how rich, how far in ranking you are, don't Forget where you come from. The ground. <laughs> okay, let me, okay. As though he heard them not. He was just writing in the ground like he ain't even hear them. But he was... Point, right? Don't forget. Okay. So when they continue asking him, he lift up himself. Mm. And said unto them, He that is without sin, 
without, without, without sin among you. <laughs> Let him first cast a stone at her. Be the first one. Jump on out there. And condemn her. And talk about her. And judge her. And. Just use her. Verse 9, and they which heard it, being convinced by their own conscience, went out one by one, <laughs> being at the eldest, even unto the least. And Jesus was left alone. And the woman standing in the mist. Jesus saved her. He saved her. <laughs> the adultery woman. The adultery woman. Was saved by Jesus. He saved her. He saves us hoes. He saves us. When we have faith, faith given to us, measured to us by God himself, we were able to receive Jesus, receive the gift. 
and he saves us. And he bought us back. He purchased us. Just like Hosea did with Gomer. Just like Jesus does with the entire body of Christ. We are all individual members of an entire body. The bride of Christ. We are Israel. We are members of many. And we're being prepared and getting ourselves ready for our wedding. Our wedding. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I want a beautiful grand wedding. So we got some work to do. Let's get busy. Let's get busy. Praising God. All right. So again, we're going to call this one the adultery woman. And I just want to say, you know, to all the beautiful women out there, especially with Mother's Day coming soon and everything, you know, a lot of us hoes, a lot of us women, a lot of us are mothers. We're daughters. We're teachers. We're nurses. We're church members. We're employees all over the country. We're healers of all types, light workers. We love. We're used by God. We're purposeful. We're worthy to be saved. Well, we're not worthy, but God finds us to be despite sin. He sacrificed and made us presentable. He's making us each and every day. It's a continual process throughout eternity. <laughs> So that we can so that we can praise God and worship Him in eternity for eternity. Be in this place of joy, peace, and happiness all the time. We get little snippets and pieces of it here on earth, you know, just enough to keep us going. <laughs> But can you imagine being happy, joyous all the time? It's, it's real and it's so possible. Well, I love you guys. I know I'm sounding kind of crazy now, so <laughs> I love you guys so much. You just, oh my God, have no idea. <laughs> Okay, bye.